Hi everyone, this is Ronnie and in today's tutorial we will demonstrate how to make an I-cord cast on. This little cup cozy that I have created uses a cable technique which is made without cable needles and it starts with a really neat and clean I-cord and it also finishes with an I-cord. So by creating this little cup cozy, we will learn how to do an I-cord cast on, an I-cord bind off, and how to create smaller cables, one or two stitch sized cables, leaning left and leaning to the right without the use of a cable needle. This is the first tutorial and we are starting by casting on. An I-cord cast on can be created two different ways. The one step method uh, creates the I-cord while also casts the stitches onto the needle. The method that I will be showing is the two-step method that will knit the I-cord to the length that we need and then picks up stitches into the I-cord. The reason I prefer this method is because uh, with the one-step method, the first stitches right on top of the I-cord, these stitches, would be loose and elongated and it's very hard to prevent that from happening but this one i created with the two-step method and as you can see the first stitches are exactly the same as the second and consequent stitches so it gives a neater and better result it does not take much longer if at all so here we go, let's start, let's learn how to make an eye cord cast on. This can be used for absolutely anything. It's uh, not very stretchy, but it's got a little bit of, of stretch. I like this method for many, many things, especially uh, things like cowls, wrist warmers, but I even use eye cord bind offs for sweater sleeves because it's very, very tidy and it gives you this clean and minimalistic look. The cast on is also fairly stretchy, so it's an ideal way to finish and start any project. Right, to start an I-cord cast on, you're gonna need to cast on three stitches with any method of your choice. I'm just using a standard long tail cast on here. It does not matter what method you use for this. Three stitches is all we need. Once we have three stitches on our needle, we're just gonna go ahead and start knitting these stitches. For an I-cord, uh, it's actually really good to use um, double point needles and you only need two of them because um, it will make it a little bit quicker. I am just using the long circular now because I'm also going to use it for this um, cup cozy so I just stick with the same needles. To make an eye cord, what you're going to do is repeat two steps. The first step is simply knitting the stitches on your needle as you normally would all three stitches there's nothing getting um, slipped it's just three normal knit stitches like so and the second stitch is putting these stitches back onto the left needle without twisting them and you shift them back in the same order that's it this is the two steps we're going to repeat as many times as long an eye cord we need you knit the three stitches and you slip them back onto your left needle. So what it does is the little tail of yarn, your working yarn is going to come out of your last stitch on the back here. And as you knit the first stitch with the working yarn coming from the last stitch, it kind of closes your stitches into a little tube. My camera is struggling to focus, but once we have more stitches on the needle, you will see it very, very clearly. Eye cords are simple. Anybody can do them. They are a little bit time consuming um, compared to just a normal cast on, but I think it's well worth it because it's not going to curl up and it's a really, really lovely finish or start in our case. For a cup cozy, like the one we are working on now, you will need somewhere along the lines of 40 to 50 stitches, depending on what yarn you use and how big your cup is and how um, tight your tension is. Um, 
the best way is to just have your cup and just keep trying it on it's gonna have a little bit of a stretch so make it a little bit uh, smaller than what you need so that it can nicely stretch and hold on to your cup once i have a um, cup of morrows i'm going to show you the effect of this custom method i mean this is just the first step of the custom because uh, we have to finish the eye cord in order to be able to pick the stitches up into the eye cord and start knitting upwards from the side of the eye cord right so as you can see now i have a fair few stitches that the back of my work is the same as the front of my work it's a perfect little tube of three columns of knit stitches you can make an eye cord a bigger size you can make it with four or five stitches even i like my eye cords with three stitches because they are nice and small right so this is it as you can see now all we have to do is carry on until we have the desired length i will get back to you when my eye cord is the right length so here i am i have made an eye cord which should be the right length i brought through the cup that i'm using and i'm just measuring it around the bottom edge it's a pretty good fit and um, I have just knit another three stitches and I did not put it back on the left needle so my working yarn is coming out from my last stitch that I've just made and now comes the part that we are going to pick up stitches into this eye cord so that we can then start knitting upwards so that we have this effect where the eye cord is sideways and we're going to start creating the pattern upwards. It's actually really easy. The only tricky thing here is that we have to make sure that we pick up the stitches in the same column of the eye cord. So as you can see, there is these little V shapes interlocking and there is three rows of that. And you can use any row, but I like to use the row that we are basically have been working into so as you can see our last stitch on the needle is coming out of this one so i'm just gonna go with this column all the way down and to make a really nice uh, start just have to remember to always work into the same column and to, ab to be able to do that i'm just pinching the eye cord between my thumb and middle finger obviously if you're a, um, a english style knitter then your working then your um, working hand is not going to be tensioned with your left um, forefinger it's probably going to hang or it's going to just be tensioned with your other hand but that does not matter just use your left hand either way to pinch your stitches together to keep an eye on this column that we're going to work into and another thing that i'm going to make sure is that i'm going into both of those little legs not just one so that the eye cord doesn't stretch out now this stitch here already has a stitch coming out of it so i'm going to just ignore that one and i'm going to go into the next one and what you're going to do is you're going to go under both of those like the entire little v catch your working yarn and pull it through and the only other thing to remember here is to make sure that this is really snug. So don't pull it up too much because then your first stitch is just going to be long and not neat. Always make sure that this is only just pulled up like that. So that one is done and you're going to go into right the next one. Go under both legs. Oops, I just split that. And pick up a stitch. Keep it snug. Go into the next one pick up a stitch next one pick up a stitch it's really really quick you can actually fly through this the only thing to keep in mind is to work into the same row of stitches and to keep your working yarn tight so that those first stitches don't get elongated blocking your piece will sort it out if you end up with a little bit looser stitches especially when you're doing this for the first time so don't worry about it too much right uh i can't even tell you how many stitches i cast on because i wasn't counting i just went by measurement if you lose track where you are like right now just try to see where where you came out of and just go with the same 
column because if you twist it, it's not going to be nice. So if you make a mistake, it's actually worth going back and release a few stitches because your end result will be much nicer if you really just pay attention to this one little thing to always go into the same column of knit stitches of your eye cord. We're going to do this all the way to the end of the eye cord. And as you can see, we've got our stitches on the needle. Sometimes I lose track and I have to double check which side of the eye cord I'm working into. It's really easy to see. And um, when we get to the end, we're just going to join it in the round and start working our first row, which is the only slightly tricky row of this project, only because we have to make sure that we distribute the stitches so that our eye cord join is going to be placed in the back of our cup cozy. You know, it's not overly important. I just like to hide my join in the back and not have it close to the pattern front side. Here we go. So we've got all the eye cord stitches now on our needle. And there is also an extra three little stitches there, which was obviously just the end of our eye cord. When the piece is finished and joined, we're going to use this tail. Should have probably mentioned it's worth leaving a little bit of a longer tail. Uh, although you can also use your working yarn or, or a completely new piece of yarn. We're going to use the tail to uh, graft the front of the eye cord to the back of the eye cord. And it's going to be nearly invisible because we're going to mimic our knit stitches and we're going to make it look like a continuous eye cord by mimicking the shape of the stitches. As you can see, it's, you can barely tell where it was joined. And the same on the top as well. It's a really clever technique. It is sort of visible, but not much at all. If you look at it from, from afar, it's just a continuous eye cord. Okay, so here's how we do the eye cord custom. This is it. Then we're going to start working with this. All I'm going to do is I'm going to split my stitches down the middle approximately. It doesn't have to be exact because in the first round, we're going to rearrange the stitches in a way that the join is going to be in the middle of the back. So I split it in half approximately. And if you're working with the... Um, magic look method, then this is the time when I'm going to pull out the cable to be able to loop. And then you just have to arrange it in a way that your working yarn is coming out of your back needle and you're going to start working into the front needle. You're going to pull out your back needle and push back your front needle. This is what we're going to be working from, and this is what we're going to be working with, so it has to be able to come around like so. This is the whole trick of magic looping. So here's my working yarn hanging out from my back, and all you have to do is make sure that these stitches are not twisted. And it's actually easier to tell when you're doing an eye cord, because this part here is kind of going to show you the eye cord has to be under your stitches all the way around. So if you would be twisting your stitches, I'm going to actually mimic that now. Uh, I'm going to twist it on purpose. Then you're going to see that your eye cord is actually coming over your needle and you're going to be able to tell that this is not correct. So you can push it back down and twist it as long as you need so that all your stitches are coming out from the same side of the eye cord and it's definitely not twisted. Then you're going to just have to get your working yarn don't mix it up with your tail get your working yarn ready here we are and we are now ready to join these pieces in the round by knitting the working yarn that's coming out of the last stitch 
into the first stitch on the other needle and we're gonna start working in the round and we're gonna start setting up the pattern and setting up the stitches for cabling.